So it's been eight years since Columbus landed and you're off to the new world to kick some butt. Or should that be the plan? Probably not. There are two distinct goals in Sid Meier's colonization. The first is to win the revolution and the second is to maximize your colonization score. Of course, you can set whatever goals you want, but the two provided are useful and reasonable. Unlike civilization, where you just sort of finish when you colonize the stars, colonization rewards you with more points for being quick, efficient, and even a bit for style. As you build your colonies up during the early years, don't neglect any one area. You need to develop your physical plant, trade, wealth, population, army, desire to rebel, and foreign relations equally. So you ask, how in the world do I do that? Start with the basics. First, as they say in real estate, location, location, location. Each colony controls a nine square group. Don't overlap the control spheres and don't include too much open water, unless you really like fish. This means that you shouldn't build on one square peninsulas or islands with less than six usable squares. Don't build too close to the Indians because this irritates them. Population is something you want and lots of it. There are many different ways to get new colonists and you should use all of them. The first is to pick up all of the colonists on the dock as soon as you can. When you have a little money built up and there are no colonists on the dock, you should recruit some. It's worth the money, but don't pay to train them. Since colonists appear on the dock because of political and religious unrest in your mother country, the more crosses you're producing, the more emigrants come to the docks. Also, when you have 200 extra food, a colonist appears. Indians have a tendency to demand food when you're approaching the magic 200 number, so bypass this by carrying the food around in a ship. This way, you can rapidly build up 200 food in one spot, as well as pick the colony where you want your new colonists to appear. One of the most important ways to gain new colonists is to take over foreign colonies. This also yields money and partially developed colonies. Everyone in a foreign powers colony will join you if you capture the colony. This is an especially good way to gain specialists. You can also capture free colonists that you find exploring. It's good to keep a backup dragoon to chase down the free colonist that results from attacking and winning a battle with a foreign power soldier. The Fountain of Youth is a great but unreliable way to gain population. There may also be more than one Fountain of Youth and each one yields eight new colonists from Europe. That means you can only get them before you declare independence. To find the fountain, you have to dedicate some of your population to searching for it. Scouts work best for this since they increase your chances of finding good things in a ruin and decrease your chances of annoying the Indians. During your searches, you may find people left over from failed colonies and they too will join your forces. While your population is still small, emphasize strengthening and expanding your colonies. Don't spend a lot of time trading manufactured goods. Europe will still pay good money for raw materials and you can switch to manufacturing later. You can also make some money trading with the Indians and simultaneously improve your relations with them. To do this, you need one wagon train. They require only lumber, so you will not have to use up tools that are in such scarcity early in the game. Avoid buying manufactured goods from Europe. Your money is better spent in other ways. Early on, you need lumber to build anything, so one of the first two colonists should be set to gathering lumber. As your population grows and you have specialists to use, the issue of what to produce becomes much more complicated. Again, it's important to keep long-term goals in mind. Crosses and Liberty Bells may seem stupid, but you won't win without producing a lot of them. There are certain buildings that every colony should build before it starts to specialize. These are docks, printing press, lumber mill, stockade, newspaper, warehouse, and blacksmith shop. Docks allow fishing and can greatly increase food surpluses. They are almost necessary on small islands with fewer than eight spaces. If you make or capture colonies that you want to keep, remember that with a stockade and three people, they cannot be abandoned. Don't forget to plan for the future. Eventually, someone's going to attack you. Ports are important because they're the only way to trade with Europe, but if you have too many, it'll be hard to defend all of them against your homeland once you declare independence. You must also defend your shipping lanes because long before the motherland comes after you, there will be privateers preying on your trade vessels. If you can make at least one port only one turn sailing distance from the ocean lanes, you'll be less susceptible to attack. On land, raids are always a possibility and it's very annoying to keep losing your fully laden wagon trains. Start with a close network of cities only three spaces apart so that land units can move between them in one turn via your roads. This kind of proximity allows you to transfer your military might to where it's needed most as new threats arise. The specific terrain squares are also important. You want to include as many of the special resources as you can. 
This will help the colony to specialize and improve your profitability. Rivers are like roads in terms of travel, and they greatly increase productivity, so several or most of your colonies should be built directly on river squares. That should help you get your colony started. Next month, more on the Continental Congress, dealing with the natives, colony specialization, and other issues that crop up as your fledgling nation increases in size.